In 2013, a new entrance for a underground station on the London Tube Network was being dug and builders came across about 10,000 Roman artefacts dating from 40s to 400 AD. Um, oddly enough, it was in what's called a lost river, which is one of the London's rivers that have been built over. And this is the Woolbrook. And one of the artefacts was this, and this has become known as the lost Roman knife. And Condor saw fit to do a version of it as well, which I think is really quite smart. And I had a piece of steel left over from a pre previous project, which I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. So this is the beginnings of my version of the lost Roman knife. I have marked the centre line on here. This is four mil thick steel and just run a four mil drill bit up and down. A little bit difficult to see. And I bought this bevel jig off Amazon. It was only 20 quid actually, it's most of them are <laughs> ferociously more expensive. It's um, it's not brilliant, but it does the job reasonably well. I've had to do some work on these bevels um, for reasons I really don't know why I did it. I put them in the bevel jig one way and then on the other side it went in um, slightly differently so it basically the bevels were really really horribly uneven. Um, but those are much nicer now. So it's time to start drilling. Three holes for the pins and I'm going to chain drill this. So it should end up looking something like that. It'd be better if those holes were a bit closer together, um, but they're not. So now we're just going to try and break through and um, have a finished oval. Now I'm going to horribly abuse a chisel. It is a cheap one. Yep, that is actually working. And that's the finished work for today. I'm quite pleased with that. It does need a little bit of tidying up, but perhaps it's even even a little bit inept. Or does it actually look quite primitive? I don't know. I'll definitely, I think I'm going to spend a little bit more time sorting that out though. Right, the heat treat has been done. I've done a little bit of polishing, but I kind of like that finish. I think that's going to look really neat. It looks a bit antique to me, but I think it's really quite striking, almost Damascus looking. So that's going to stay like that, I think. It does feel like a nice knife as well. It really does. That feels great. I think it's going to have quite some potential. I might have to straighten out the tip, which I bent a little bit. And I dropped it when I was heat treating it, unfortunately. There we go. But yeah, I like that finish. I think that's really kind of cool. The scales are now very roughly in place. Let's make it a knife. Right, so the scales are done as well as I can do them. Now it's time to try and do the engraving. I'm a bit nervous about this stage. So I've drawn the basic pattern out. Hmm, okay, <laughs> let's see. So that is the finished result. Yeah, it's not brilliant, but at least I've had a go and I've tried something. I have to learn how to use the Dremel all over again and how to engrave wood. And um, yeah, it's not quite as easy as I thought, but not too shabby either. Right, so it's now got a reasonable edge on it. I'm going to make a sheath by wet forming, which is I just soak the leather, wrap the knife in cling film, wrap that over there, leaving a reasonable amount, a little bit more perhaps, to lap over. Put something useful like this big bag of risotto rice on top. Leave it there for a bit, 20 minutes or so. That will then form, the leather will then form around the knife and we'll have quite a nice basis to start a sheath. To start the stitching, we've got a belt loop on. This really is one of my least favorite jobs. I hate making sheaths, but it's gotta be done. And there is the sheath, all done. It, as I said, it, it's not a job I like doing, so I didn't really do a how I did it 
video because there are far better people uh, who can make sheets than I can, but it will do. And we will go and have a look at this in a bit more depth. Here, why? Because this is Jordan Hill Roman Temple, one of only two that I'm aware of actually in Dorset. This is what it would have looked like. So this then is the finished item, which I'm really quite pleased with. I mean, sheath not brilliant, but I have said I'm not a very good sheath maker. It also actually put, popped a couple of stitches there, so that's set in with super glue. So, if we can get it out, there it is in all its glory. Still that lovely finish on the blade. I have polished a little bit of it. Engraving and carving, it's not my strong point, but I did it. I made it. And it is actually a surprisingly comfortable knife to use. I'm not going to use it out here because we are actually overlooked by houses, so I'm a little bit concerned not to film this for too long out here. So yeah, that's that gorgeous, gorgeous canard wood. Nice finish on there. And I have actually slightly damaged the tip. I did drop it while I was heat treating it, and I thought I got it perfectly straight. I haven't. So that's a nice little nod towards the original, which of course has lost its tip. It is overall, if I remember, I put a ruler. There we go, that long, reasonable size blade. It is surprisingly comfortable and a good knife to use. Yeah, works well, looks good, was quite enjoyable to build and I've learnt a thing or two. So there we go. Roman knife in a Roman temple. So let's just have a look at the setting of this intriguing temple. We've actually just been talking to a couple who turned up to have a look at it. They were actually quite disappointed. So there's not a lawyer, is there? Well, let's give you pause for a moment. And you'll see there is actually quite a lot here. There's not a lot left of the temple, but it's still a striking place.